Hi there guys, Mr. Martin here again. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in this video, what we're going to be looking at is the first in two theories of sleep and dreams. Now remember, for your exam, the theories are examinable content. They can ask you about these specifically. They can ask you about little parts of them or maybe the entire theory. So these are worth knowing and worth knowing well. As I say, there are two of these. We're going to start off today with the first of our theories. This is the restoration theory of sleep and dreams. So let's dive straight in. To give you some kind of context about thinking about theories of sleep and dreams, we need to ask ourselves two questions. First one is, why is there a need for sleep? Reasonable question. And the second one is, why do we dream? Also a reasonable question. The short answer to both of these questions is, no one knows. Nobody has a clue. And this is bizarre when you think about it because we spend, on average, one third of every day asleep, unconscious. So it must be for something, right? And it's amazing that we still haven't worked out exactly what it's for. Now, psychologists have tried to bring together many different ideas, different bits of research, different findings about sleep and dreams in an attempt to answer this exact question or these exact questions. Now, we're going to start by thinking about one particular theory, which is quite interesting. This, proposed by Oswald in the 1960s, 1966 to be exact, is the restoration theory. Now, this picture here should tell you all you need to know about the restoration theory. What Oswald is arguing here is that sleep, especially REM sleep or perhaps different parts of it, are for one reason only. They are for restoration, restoring your energy, repairing your cells, your body parts, and allowing growth to occur. So what Aswald is telling us here is that sleep is a physical thing. It is simply to recharge your batteries so you can wake up and keep on going. Now, Oswald also gives us another little addendum to that. He also says that sleep allows neurotransmitters to replenish. That is the chemicals inside your brain. It allows them to normalize, to reset. And so it also aids psychological recovery as well. So not only do you wake up feeling physically better, but you also wake up feeling mentally better as well. We all know the old saying, you know, if you feel um, ill or you feel tired or you feel a bit unwell, you go to sleep and then you feel better in the morning. Oswald is proposing just that. Let's think about some of the thinking behind Oswald's uh, thought here, is it this theory. He points straight away to newborns. Now, a newborn infant can sleep for 20 hours a day, sometimes even more than that. Oswald would say the reason for this is that they need to grow. They need to put all of that energy into rapid growth, into brain development, into physical muscle development. Now, Oswald also points out that over 50% of that sleep is REM sleep. So babies spend 50% of their day, or roughly 50%, 10 hours a day, dreaming. So it must be for something. Oswald would say it's for rapid growth, development, allowing all of these physical things to happen very, very quickly. Let's have a look at this as well. This table tells us roughly the sleep needs for different ages. When you're a newborn, 14 to 17 hours per day on average. Infants, 12 to 15 hours and so on and so on. The older you get, the less sleep you seem to need. And this makes sense according to Oswald's restoration theory because by the time you're 65 years and over, well, you've done all your growing, right? You don't have anywhere left to grow. You don't need to grow any further. All you need to do is repair now, this would tell us something about why we need to sleep simply, again, to aid physical and mental recovery. This is the restoration theory. Another piece of evidence that Oswald points out here is that during slow wave stage four, that is the deepest form of sleep, if you remember, there is a surge, an increase in growth hormone, suggesting to us that sleep has a pretty key role in growth and repair. At no point do you have more growth hormone surging through your veins than when you were in the deepest part of sleep. Now that tells us that the body recognizes that sleep is for something. The body's telling you that growth mainly happens when you're asleep. When we deliberately injure a rat, quite sad I know, but when we deliberately injure one, it seems that they heal slower if they don't get to sleep which would also tell us that 
repair happens when we're asleep. Not just growth, but also repair. You take away sleep, turns out you don't repair as well. Seems pretty foolproof, this theory. The last thing we speak about here is in terms of psychological, mental recovery as well. So remember, he's also arguing that brain neurotransmitters, all these little messengers inside your head, are normalizing during sleep. And this aids psychological recovery. How do we know this? Well, we look at stressed patients. Someone who's going through a period of stress tends to sleep for longer than someone who is not stressed. Someone who is currently depressed tends to sleep for longer than someone who is comparatively not depressed. Why should this be? Perhaps it's down to recovery, mental recovery, helping their neurotransmitters to normalize. This also might explain that old adage, the go to bed, you'll feel better in the morning. Oswald would say, well, yeah, that makes sense because you are restoring your brain is getting better. Your body's getting better as well. There is a lot of science to that. Here's the last bit of evidence I'll point out to you. Shapiro in the 1980s, looking at ultra marathon runners. Now, an ultra marathon is like a marathon, but much longer. These people are utterly insane. They are incredible athletes running vast differences, distances. Sorry. Turns out that following an ultra marathon race, these actual athletes, these runners, tend to sleep for much, much longer. Well, why should they do that other than to help them repair their bodies, right? Horn and Harley in the 1980s also showed something quite interesting. They were a little bit sceptical about Shapiro's findings and simply said, we reckon this is not down to recovery. Maybe it's just down to the heat that the body was generating. So they had a couple of people, brought them into a room. Sorry, six people in total. They brought them into a room and they fired a hairdryer at their face. Most of those people slept a little bit longer at night. So what they're saying here is it's not so much about the actual physical exertion. It's more about the heat that you're generating. So Horn and Harley say that maybe, yeah, it is about the physical, but it probably is just about the brain that needs restoration and not the rest of the body. Either way around, still quite interesting. Let's think a little bit about the evaluation of this theory because it seems pretty foolproof, right? Sleep is for restoration. Sleep is for making yourself feel better. Strengths in this theory, well, it gives us a logical explanation for why all mammals need sleep, perhaps even all animals. Most animals do go to sleep. Even tiny little fruit flies go to sleep. Now, if there were some deeper, darker meaning for sleep and dreams or you know, Freud's ideas about the id expressing itself, well, we're pretty confident that a little Drosophila fruit fly doesn't have an id or a superego. So maybe this is the reason why most animals on planet Earth sleep. We also know from fact that sleeping too little results in really poor performance. Think about Peter Tripp from one of the earlier videos, the guy who did the wake-a-thon for 200 hours. The guy was absolutely, and he was in a horrible state at the end of it. So it tells us that, yeah, people do feel much worse when they don't get to sleep. In weakness, however, well, this model seems to be a little bit oversimplistic. If it were just about making yourself feel better, then why is sleep so complex? Why, for example, do we have all the different stages of sleep? Slow wave one, two, three, and four. And why do we even have REM sleep? Why do we even bother to dream during sleep for that matter? We don't know, neither does Oswald. Hobson in 2005 also points out a criticism of this model. He says that sleep seems to be only for the brain because, as he points out quite rightly, you will get better, physically and mentally better, if you just rest. You don't need to go to sleep to make yourself feel better. If you're just sitting on the couch, watching TV, watching Netflix, you're going to get better, similarly to if you were spending the night asleep. So it seems to be that sleep is a brain phenomenon. You're going to get better anyway. It just so happens that you get better when you're asleep. Either way around, an interesting theory for us to start off thinking about theories of sleep and dreams. That's everything for this video, guys. I hope you've learned a little something from it. In our next video, we're going to be talking about the other theory of sleep and dreams. But until then, guys, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.